Aloha and mahalo for listening to messages from Victory Reach Hawaiian Island. We pray that you are inspired, challenged, and encouraged to become all that God has called for you to be. Praise God. Go ahead, stand with me and turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. I want you to know that when God saves you, God has a whole plan for you. And He gets so excited when you're here at church. Amen? He gets so excited when we get saved. And He gets really excited when we're, when we're saved and we stay obedient. Right? That's a big challenge to stay obedient. And I want to challenge you and I want to encourage you to stay obedient to God. You know that you can be saved but be a little disobedient, right? But, but we need to try our best to have such a conviction that says, you know what, I, I want to be a person that stays obedient to God all the time when He deals with us with big things and even with little things as well. Amen? If God is the one dealing with us, then we need to just let it happen and, and um, obey. Amen? And uh, today I want to talk to you about something, uh, continue on the topic. I mentioned to you last week, if you were here last week, that early in the year, every year, Pastor Sonny Sr., he meets with all the regional pastors and elders and different leaders that he has all over the world. And uh, my wife and I have the privilege to go to these meetings. And he ended the meetings, it's a week long of meetings, and he ended the meeting by telling everybody one word, and that was stretch. Everybody say stretch. And, and um, implying that God wants to stretch us and go out there and let God stretch you. And I want to do the same thing is encourage you to let God stretch you. Not just let him save you, but let him stretch you so that others could be saved. You understand what I'm saying? Don't just let him save you. That, that's, that's on the one right there, right? We need to get saved. If you're here and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, let today be your day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. God loves you so much. And he wants a relationship with you. So we pray that today be that day that you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ. You surrender your heart to God. But at the same time, we don't just want to encourage you to get saved. But we want you to encourage you to allow God to stretch you. Because God wants to use you so others can be saved. The further you let him stretch you, the wider you let him stretch you, the, the more people come to to Jesus through your life. So salvation allows you to go to heaven, but when you stretch, it allows you to be used of God so others can go to heaven. Is stretching a big deal? It's a big deal. Maybe your life doesn't depend on it, but somebody else's life depends on it. So the more we allow him to stretch us, the more he can use us so others can be saved. Amen? Isaiah 54, one of our promised scriptures. It says this, Isaiah 54, starting in verse 2 and 3. It says, enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge it. Enlarge it. So he's saying, you already have a tent. You're a tent. I know there's another scripture that talks about that. And you know that when you go to heaven, you're going to be given a new tent. Uh, come on, talk to me. Yeah? Uh, did you know that? I, maybe you didn't know that. And you're like, no, I didn't know that. Well, you, you're going to get a new body. Come on, in heaven. Amen? Right? Some, so, some of us are like, really, Lord? Can I just keep this one? I'm just kidding. Right. Isaiah 54, 2, again, it says, enlarge the place of your tent. And this is, this is talking about, too, you know, in, for, for, in our perspective here, it's talking about God's house. Like, we want to enlarge God's house. We want to make room for people to come to Jesus. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. And your descendants. Talking about your kids and your spiritual kids. People you bring to Jesus. Will possess nations. And settle in desolate cities. Father we love you. Speak to us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Everybody say stretch. God wants us to stretch. God wants to stretch us so he, so he can use us in even greater ways. Now, I got good news for you, and this is something I need you to catch and internalize and really understand. 
that God is not limited by our limitations. I'm going to say that again, and I hope it excites you, and I hope it, it does something in your spirit, that God is not limited by your limitations. God is not limited by our limitations. I know in some senses, in some situations, I know that he is, but I'm talking about when I, when, when I look at people that God has used, I want to look at three people that God has used in the Bible. People who have been used of God to do something that we aspire to do. Some of you are like, well, speak for yourself. How, how, how do you know I'm included in the we? Well, I'm, in, I'm assuming that you want God's will for your life. Amen? So us as a church and us as believers, we should desire to bring as many people to Jesus. Right? Right? We should have a desire for people to go to heaven as well as us going to heaven. So that's something that should be pretty basic. It should be part of our life. It should be a conviction that we hold. When you look at people that were used in great ways, and I'm not limiting um, just winning a couple of people to Jesus, to the Lord, as it not being great. Because bringing one person to Jesus is, is something great. Amen? Amen? Whoever brought you to Jesus, whoever God used to pray you in or to witness to you or, or, or to encourage you to come to church, they have been used of God in a great way. Give the Lord a hand for them wherever they are. Maybe they're in heaven. Maybe they're somewhere else. Maybe they're in the sanctuary. But that is being used of God in a great way. But the more souls we touch, we could say that that's even being used in a greater way. In other words, touching one person is great. Touching two is even greater, and and so on and so forth. God has a vision for your life. In that vision, it 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 is completely it it is completely about you and I being used by God to reach people. Don't think a vision for your life is just about being prosperous on this earth or just about having a healthy marriage or your kids acting right or having a nice car, and things like that, you being blessed? No. Because, see, God knows, and if we read our word, we know that life here on this earth, we're just passing by. We're just passing through. So we know that, that, you know, having it good on this life, but not in the life afterwards, is, is, is not the goal. The goal is to have life everlasting. And that is... That comes through Jesus Christ alone and us bringing people to Jesus. That's why we live a life excited to, uh, with a mission to bring people to God. And that's why when God sees us and God has a vision for your life, his vision entails you being used by God to impact people and bring them to Jesus. I'm not talking about you having a title necessarily. I'm talking about you being used as an instrument, as an agent, to be, bring people to God. What an honor. What, what, that's, that's beautiful. And if that comes with a title, praise the Lord, because maybe that title will open doors for you or will qualify you to do something for His honor and glory and to impact even more people for God. Before there is church expansion, there must be heart expansion. God, God is, let me tell you, God is doing something in your heart right now. He's doing something in your heart right now. He's allowing things to happen in your life to expand you. These things going on in your life, they're going to expand your faith. They're going to expand your prayer life. They're going to expand you as a person. It's going to expand your mind. It's going to expand your heart. Now can the reverse happen and we can get bitter and close up? Yes, that could happen, but let's not let the devil get the glory. We are not a people that accommodate the devil. We don't accommodate the enemy. We do what's best through the eyes of God and for our lives and for our families. Amen? Amen. So we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't do things according to how he wants it done. So holding resentment, getting bitter, slowing down, all that stuff is things the enemy would want. And we will not accommodate him. God, God's track record, this is good news right here. God's track record shows 
that our limitations don't limit God. So I told you I want to talk to you about three people that were used of God, in, in, in my opinion, in a way where like, well, man, we want that to happen in and through our lives. And what it is is they, they rocked the city for God. They shook nations for God. They rescued a whole lot of people. They saved a lot of people. And, and, and I got a prophetic word for you. You're, God wants to use you to save a lot of people. I said God wants to use you to save a lot of people. That's why you got the target. That's why he's always messing with you. Because you are the perfect candidate for him to use. You, you have been chosen. That's why you wrestle with your flesh and, and you have these principalities against you. Because, because Satan fears you. Did you know that? The enemy fears you coming in alignment with what God has for your life. The vision. The heavenly vision that God has for you. Well, let's look at God's track record. I want to talk to you about the three people I want to talk to you about. I'll tell you about one, some of the things that they did. One guy, he rescued, he was used of God, not just one person, not just 10 people, over a million people. Way over a million people. I mean, these guys were leading mega churches before. I put it this way. Today's mega churches, but you know, the big churches with thousands of people, that's nothing. That's manini compared to what these guys did. Come on, somebody. We're talking about, they, they gave the count of the men's ministry alone was 600,000 people in the men's ministry. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of guys. Now, most of them had wives. Come on, somebody. Or a girlfriend, or sisters, or mothers. They had children. So at the very least, there were 600,000 men that this guy was used of the Lord to rescue. How many would like to be used of God to build great things for His honor and glory? Where not just hundreds of people are coming to God, not just thousands, but hundreds of thousands of people come to Jesus through your humble self, through you, your insignificant self, through our insignificant selves. Well, the other person I want to talk to you about, he, he I mean, we would be happy if, if you went to school, you would be happy if everyone in your class got saved. Can you imagine if your whole school got saved? Teachers included and students included, if they all gave their lives to Jesus? Now, this guy didn't just win, you know, uh, like a, a section within the city or within that, that island. He won the whole island for God. How many want to win entire islands for God? He won an entire people from, from, the, from the, the, the king of that island to the common folks. Everyone repented. Everyone listened to the word of God and obeyed God and came to God. Can you imagine if all your family got saved? All your uncles, your aunties, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters, your sons, your daughters, your friends, people you ran the street, your enemies. Imagine they all came to Jesus. Imagine you started a life group, whether it be on the west side or, 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 or the the North Shore side or, or in town or, 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 or the windward side. Imagine you started something for Jesus and you didn't just have 10 people, which would be cool, or 20 people, that's, that's even better, or 50 people, that's nice. But can you imagine the entire city ended up coming to Jesus? Can you imagine that? Well, that's what happened to this guy. But not just that city, that whole the whole island. Now, can you imagine? Now, there's this other person. This was a sister. How many, how many women of God want to be used of the Lord? Amen? Come on, sisters, make some noise. You want to be used of God, right? Well, well, this woman, God used her to take her city, the city she grew up in. She spread the gospel. She told the whole city about Jesus. And people came to Jesus through her. The Bible says many 
in her city came to Jesus. How many want to bring many to Jesus from the cities that you grew up in, whatever city you grew up in? Wouldn't that be beautiful, right? Or the city you live in currently, or the city your church is, is located in. Wow, to, to, be, to have been an instrument like that. That's our desire. That should be our desire, to be an instrument like that, that God can use to spark something. I mean, before, maybe you used to spark, you used to instigate problems. You see that way that dude looked at you? You're going to let him do that? Right? You, oh, you, you're going to let her, you know, mess up on you like that? You're gonna let, you know, we used to instigate. How about we spark something for Jesus? Amen? Because, you know, that a fire, a forest fire could start with a spark. And we could, how many want to start a fire for God, though, in a positive, amen? And we could be that spark. You could be, it could be traced down to, to your humble obedience. To your, it, it could go back to that your obedience resulted in a lot of people getting saved, getting set free, getting rescued. That's a life well lived. That is a life well lived. Now, these people that I'm talking about, they had issues. I look at their lives and I say, man, you use them to do what we aspire to do. And, and so you would think that they're people that are like, man, I mean, you know, they're just like, they just got it all together. But the fact is, when you look at their lives, they didn't. They had a lot of issues. Let me tell you about the first one I talked to you about. His name is Moses. He had a men's ministry of over 600,000 people. Moses was a guy who couldn't talk right. If there's anybody here that says, you know what, Pastor, man, I'll do stuff in the church, but please don't have me preach. If there's anybody here who says, you know what, man, I, 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 I'm down for, to do sounds. I'm down to clean up. I'll help even build the children's gang ministry. I'm excited about a kids' gang ministry being worked on, right? You say, man, I, I, I'll get my hands dirty there, but, but please don't put me to teach. I can't talk. Some of you don't feel smart, of a, smart enough. Some of us don't feel smart enough. Don't feel we read good enough. Don't feel we write good enough. Don't feel we talk eloquent enough. Well, i got news for you. If you can't talk right and you feel you can't speak right, then you may have some limitations there. But you could at least do what Moses did. And Moses built a ministry with over a million people. Can you imagine that? Moses, as a matter of fact, was used as a prophet. You know, you know what a prophet's main tool is? It's, it's, it's him talking. Isn't it interesting that the very area that God aspires to use is an area that gets hit? Some of you gossipers, hello somebody, come on, should probably be the best preachers. Some who are all moked out, come on somebody, real, real loud and, and, and you know, well, you know what, maybe you should be the loudest preacher. But even the humble ones that don't like saying nothing, maybe it's the enemy trying to mute you. And God is saying, I want to use your voice. Maybe you were a cusser, but Jesus set you free. Maybe you used to curse people. Man, I hope, you know, they die, you know. Well, you know what? God, the, the enemy tried to pervert the very tool that God aspires to use in your life. Well, Moses, he, he faced that. Exodus chapter 4, verse 10 says this. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. So Moses was 80 years old when he was having, when God called him. And Moses is saying, God, I have not been eloquent for 80 years. 80 years I've lived, and 80 years I have not been an eloquent speaker. 
I'm here to tell you that I don't care how long you haven't been an eloquent speaker. God wants to use you to preach the gospel. God wants to use you to speak. Speaking is a big part of your ministry. Some of you are like, oh man, I hate that. You, you know, because not speaking, not speaking, how are they going to hear unless someone speaks? You, you got to be careful with, the, with the, gospel, the current gospel that just encourages being a good example and doing nice things for people. Because then you're going to have people going to hell, but you gave them a sandwich. You gave them socks. You understand what I'm saying? We don't just give people things. We give people the gospel. And we don't just exemplify it because then they're just going to go, that's a great guy right there. Well, that sis, that per, they may not call you sister, right? But they're going to say, that girl, man, she's, she's good people. Okay, so they, they're going to go to hell, but you have a good testimony. <laughs> you having a good testimony isn't good enough. you got to testify. Woo! Now, you're, you testifying is more powerful and more impacting when you have a good testimony. Oh. Partner the two together. Partner the two together. What well, he was saying, ah, I can't speak good. He said, neither in the past or since you've spoken to your servant. He says, he ends it by saying in that point in this scripture, verse 10, he says, I am slow of speech and tongue. I am slow of speech and tongue. So listen, if God can use Moses, I got good news for you. God can use you. If God was not limited by Moses' complaint, and God still anointed him and used him. You know what his message was? Was simply going up to Pharaoh and saying, saying, Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. Now I declare to you that God wants to use your voice to say some prayers for a city, Amen. prayers for your family, Amen. prayers for your loved ones. And we need to pray and say, devil, let our people go. Devil, let the islands go. Devil, let my family go. Devil, let my daughter go. Devil, let my, my sister go. Devil, let my spouse go. When the devil tries to hit you in your mind and your heart, tempt you, you guys say, devil, you let me go in the name of Jesus. But he don't got a hold of you no more. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Moses couldn't talk to the other guy. I was talking to you about that one whole island to God was a guy named Jonah. Jonah had all kinds of issues, all kinds of flaws. Yet he has probably the absolute best, like, percentage-wise, he won 100% of the island to God. I've never, in the history of studying revivals and moves of God, have you seen such a successful number of 100% of the people coming to Jesus? Wow. Coming to the Lord, rather, is the Old Testament. Well, Jonah chapter 1, he had issues. One of his issues, among many, Moses had a lot more, by the way, that I could have mentioned, Jonah, one of his issues was he was a runner. Jonah ran. Some of us here in this place, we're runners. We run. You get into it with your spouse and you want to run. Get into it somewhere at church and you want to run. You're bored and you want to run. Come on, somebody. You got to be careful with boredom. Jonah chapter 1 says this, the word of the Lord, verse 1, says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Verse 2 says, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come before me. Now, he's a prophet. He's called to preach. Just like you're called to preach. But you know what he did? Verse 3, but Jonah ran away. Jonah ran away. Don't run away. Don't run from your call. Don't run for, for what God has for you. One of the 
the, the sayings that one of our elders said, would say is, when under the gun, don't run. Jonah would run. In chapter 4, verse 1, not only would, would, did Jonah have running problems, rebellious problems, but also Jonah struggled with anger. Anybody with some anger issues here? You're like, where is it, Pastor? <laughs> Jonah chapter 4, verse 1 says this. But to Jonah, this was after the revival happened. Jonah was rebellious before and after the move of God. It says here, but Jonah, th- to, Jonah to Jonah, this seemed very wrong. And he became angry. You know, some of us here, we look at things that happen in the kingdom, in the ministry, in, in, in the church, and you say, man, that seems wrong to me. That seems wrong. But you know, God has a... Sometimes God may agree with you, amen? Sometimes. But sometimes you may think something is wrong, and, and the Lord is just up to something that's way bigger than you and I could, could, could imagine. And there's other dynamics in, in place here. And, and with Jonah, that was the case. He, here he is, a man of God, but God did something that to Jonah seemed wrong. And he became angry. He had anger problems. Moses had anger problems too. Jonah, not only did he have anger problems, not only did he run, but also Jonah struggled with depression. As a matter of fact, after, you know, even some of us here have been used of God. Jonah was a backslider, really, in a sense. He, he ran from God. He, he disobeyed the Lord and left the will of God. And Jonah, you could say Jonah fell. He got, became distant from the Lord. You know what, jo- God, what God did to Jonah? God sent a fish his way to swallow him up, right? And that was the love of God. Those of us who are running, if you're running today, I'm going to tell you that God is going to tailor make some situations for you. The Bible says God sent a fish. Now, some say that fish was about 70 feet long. That means he had a whole, you know, house. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> God's like, I'm, I'm going to take care of you. He, he didn't. He didn't die in there. You know, he he probably should have died, but God preserved him. Just like God has preserved you. Amen. He's allowed you to go through some stuff. And and even though we were in disobedience, he had mercy on us. He had mercy on him. And, and, And Jonah repented and he went and when he went to go preach. But then afterwards, the devil hit him again. You know, this is an ongoing spiritual fight. But some of us think that you're only in the fight if you serve the Lord. So you're like, I'm tired of fighting. Guess what? You were fighting before. You just didn't know it because you were losing and knocked out. We we found you and we're like, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. (laughs) Jonah, after the fight, after, after, excuse me, after the, the revival broke out and the whole island got saved, he got depressed. Jonah chapter 4, verse 3 says this, now, the, now, now, Lord, take away my life. Take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Wow, this is a prophet that goes through this. So yes, you may go through things like this, but it doesn't limit that God can use you. You may be an individual that struggles with depression, struggles with your self-worth, Maybe you struggle with insecurities and, and, and you, you know, how you see your own self. I got news for you. God sees you as bigger than you see yourself. God sees beyond whatever struggles you may go through. He sees the depression. He sees the possible even suicidal thoughts that you see here in Jonah's life. And this is not the first time, by the way. The Bible tells us, in that, that when he ran away, he went into a ship and, he, and, and the storm hit the ocean because of him. You know, you know storms come, well, storms will follow you. You can leave the island, but guess what? Storms are going to follow you everywhere you go. Just storms are just going to follow you. <laughs> it 
So what happens is Jonah, in that boat, he, it's a storm, and everybody's crying out to their God and false gods, and, and he's asleep. You know what that tells me? If so much was going on, the, the boat was rocky, people were crying out, and he's sleeping. He was depressed. So in chapter 4, there's no surprise, he got depressed again. This guy struggled with that, yet he won an entire island to God. God can use you. You may have mental battles, but God can use you. You may get sad every once in a while, like you don't feel like you got the victory, but God can use you. And God will give you the victory. God will renew you. You know, we are believing for minds to be renewed. Oh, God, we pray that you renew minds here this morning, God. God, we pray, God, that just like you told that man to stretch out his hand and you gave him a new hand, Lord, we pray that you renew minds, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yes, some need miracles in this area. Yes, it, it may even affect your marriage. and It affects your daily life. It affects you working and your income. And we're going to believe God to heal you in the name of Jesus. You may feel it's going to affect you in ministry. But God is saying, you can be used of the Lord despite your struggles. God used them despite his anger. A whole island repented. Despite his depression, a whole island repented. Despite Moses' inability to talk, a whole nation was rescued from slavery and were freed. The last and final person I want to talk to you about is a sister. She's a Samaritan sister. Jonah's message was, was very simple. He just went around telling them to, to repent. and He went around telling them, God's going to destroy you. He didn't even give his message with love. He didn't go, God loves you, repent. He's like, God's going to destroy you in 40 days. God's going to destroy you and you and you. And he didn't like, you know that, that he was prejudiced. He was prejudiced. You know, don't, don't, I'm telling you, be careful with the modern day ministry, the way modern day, because modern day style of ministry is, 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 is a, a pastor, what what do you think I should do? And the response is, well, what do you like? That's modern day doing ministry. You see, God, he don't do it like that. He didn't say, Jonah, he didn't, Jonah didn't say, God, use my life. How do you just use me, Lord? And then God didn't say, okay, how would you like me to use you? No. God, you know, you may hate. You may hate people from the west side. God just may send you to the west side. You'd be like, oh, I, I hate, uh, I hate holly people. Oh, he just, he just may send you to the, to the, to the brightest skinned country in the world. Some place that don't even have sun. You know what I mean? They send you right there. Boom. Oh, I don't like 94 block because it's been invaded by Marshallese. He may just send you to the Marshall Islands. You, ne you never know. You never know. So, so don't think that, that God is, is, is required to ask you what you would like to do in the church or within the kingdom. He didn't do that to Jonah, and, and he, he probably not going to do that to us either. Amen. The Samaritan woman, she had a different issue that probably none of us in this room had. She had a little lust problem. Come on, somebody. She had relationship problems. I was at a wedding, and me and, me and, me and Kepps were walking away from the wedding. We were leaving, and, and we heard one of the aunties say, to tell her nephews, by the way. Kepp is here. He'll tell you. He said, Oh, you know what? Auntie's been with a lot of men. <laughs> Me and Keppa were, were laughing. He was, he was like, man, she said that. Like, that was like a, like, what would you say, Keppa? Like, what would you say? Oh, yes, yes. She said, she, she was proud of that. 
And she said it a couple of times. She, Auntie's been with a lot of men. Okay, well, this auntie right here, she was with a lot of men. And, and you know what? I don't know who you've been with, how many you've been with, amen, but I'll tell you this, that you may have a past that even gets, you know, worse and darker, and there's, there's different, you know, there's sexual immorality that, that's not that cute. There's, there's rape, there's molestation, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. There's people going to strip clubs and prostitution, and, and there's adultery, and there's all kinds of stuff that's not that cute out there. Because the devil, he'll come in and pervert it, right? And this, this lady, she had a lot of failed relationships, possibly a lot of failed marriages, and then she was, she was living with a guy that she wasn't even married to. Everybody say, ooh. Oh. Blasphemy. John chapter 4, verse 16 says this. This is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus tells her this. Go call your husband and come back. And she says, I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands. And the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. But you know, that despite her past, Despite her broken relationships, despite her mistakes and failed marriages and currently in a sinful relationship, Jesus loved her. And she had an encounter with Jesus. She had an encounter with Jesus and God knew her past and loved her anyways. This is not Jesus putting her on blast. Oh, Jesus, you already knew the answer and you're asking me the question. That's messed up. No. One, it did show that Jesus was a prophet because he wasn't from Samaria. He He knew because he was a prophet of God. He is God. And so he knows us. So despite him knowing us, he still wants to use us. And he used this lady. And he used her life. And she went back, the Samaritan woman to Samaria, right there where she was at, and started telling everybody. And Moses' message was, let my people go. Jonah's message was, in 40 days, God's going to destroy you guys. Her message was, come meet the man who told me everything I ever did. Come meet him. Come meet him. Come meet him. Come meet him. See, these guys didn't have these long messages, but their messages were, were, they said what God told them to say. And as the musicians make their way, as the worship team makes their way, I I want, this message was, was geared to encourage you and to remind us that God is not limited by our limitations. Did she have limitations? Yes. God used her to revival an entire city and people could have said i'm not gonna go to your church to your god you you man you you nasty you've been around you don't have no credibility to be preaching look who you are at this point she probably hadn't even moved out yet come on somebody before she even packed her stuff she was already preaching wow God used her. And God will use you. Have you had a failed relationship? Have you struggled a little bit with with some ungodly thoughts? Seen things with these eyes that maybe you shouldn't have or done things in your past that wasn't, you know, uh, God's design of how to do things? Maybe, most likely, a lot of us have. I know my wife and I, we came in we were living together, teenagers, 16 years old, had my first kid. We were living together, and, and she was already pregnant, and we walked through the doors of Victory Outreach. And I thank God they didn't judge me because of that. I thank God that, that they didn't say, oh, you know, you've already defiled yourselves. No, they loved us, 
and we had an encounter with Jesus. And we told people, come and meet man, the one that loved us despite what we've done. And so we told our friends and our family. And you, you know, today, we've tallied up to a good, a good at least 60 people in our families who've become born-again Christians. Give the Lord a big hand for that. Amen? Man, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's incredible. That's God. That's God. So yes, God, God, you know, yes, God's record shows that he is not limited by our limitations despite our anger, our our depression, despite not being able to talk, despite even being prejudiced, despite being around. You know what I mean. God will forgive us. God will renew us. And God will use us. Our job is to obey. 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 I don't know if you've been obeying lately or if you're in the process of, of distancing, but today is your day to obey, to come back to obedience to God, to obey the Lord. For us to see a move of God, we must obey Charles Finney said this, a revival is nothing else than a new beginning of obedience to God. A revival is nothing else than a new beginning of obedience to God. Let your new beginning start today. From this day forward, renew your obedience to God. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit be here and that it move in every heart that it would move, that your spirit would move in every life, oh God. We pray, God, that, that Lord, that, that we would be revived, oh God. God, that those who don't know you today would know you and have an encounter like that woman. She had an encounter with you, Jesus, and her life was never the same. God, let people to have encounters today and it'll never be the same, God. Let those who are distanced from you that have touched you and they've known you, you've touched them, and they've, they're, 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 they're running. Their, their back is towards you, God. Let them to make a U-turn, God. Let them come back to you, God. God, just like Jonah came back, Lord, and you accepted him back, and, and you gave him the same call when he came back. Not a different call, same call. Thank you, Lord, for not taking our call away, though we deserve it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you to stand and... And, and if you're here and, and maybe you struggle with any one of those things that we talked about, the altars are open and I want you to come, come and say, God, I want to be obedient to you despite my inabilities, despite my limitations. Come, come. If you, if you say, God, you can use my life despite my limitations. And you can ask the Lord, God, but would you help me with my limitations, God? Would you help me with my anger? Would you help me to speak? Would you help me to talk to people? Would you help me with my insecurities? God, would you help me with my lust for love? 